Welcome back. This is the second part of my interview with Virginia Russell about memories of her life. And I wanted to start this time with anything that you wanted to say last time that you think you forgot to mention. I think I, I did mention how kind and caring my father was as a postman. If, a, if he knew that a family was waiting for a letter from their son, a serviceman, he would make a special trip to, to deliver that letter if it came in after most of the mail. So that he, he had, he had their, their cares and their wants in his heart and he, he was a wonderful friend to all of those people. Do you know in his uh, rounds as a postman, was he pretty much only in the area where you lived or did he see a more diverse populace of, of the city of Baltimore? No, he was main, mainly, he mainly delivered to the area where we lived. Okay. Last time that we talked, um, you were talking about um, that you went to Lebanon Valley. Yes. As how many years did you go there? Just one year, just the first year. And did you have a declared major at that time? Well, uh, it, it was music. I don't know that it, that it was music education. It might have been that. But uh, I, I played in the band, and the band director uh, uh, was interested in in, in me as, as a musician, and he suggested that since it, that I would, maybe I would like to play the French horn rather than the trumpet. I think maybe he needed French horns in his band. So that happened at Lebanon Valley, yeah, at Val not at Peabody? Yeah, at, at Lebanon Valley. He suggested that I switch to the French horn, and he gave me lessons on the horn. So he did a good job of that because then the next year, I decided to transfer to Peabody, and I I got a scholarship on, based on my knowledge of the piano and the horn. Now, when did you begin playing trumpet? I was in high school. And how did that come about? Had you known a trumpet player, or? I remember hearing trumpets on the radio, hearing Horace Height and his three trumpets, and I I thought they were wonderful and I wanted to sound like that too. So they were a trumpet trio? Yes. And they were popular? Yeah, they were popular then. And so then, so then in high school you started? It was in the, high school. The trumpet. Mm -hmm. Did you have a private teacher? Yes, I think it was a teacher who who taught at the store where I bought the trumpet. And so I continued lessons with him. And were you meanwhile continuing piano? I don't think that I was uh, because I think I I had I I I had enough piano credits to be accepted into Peabody so that I did not have to, to study piano there. But I mean in high school when you started playing the trumpet. I was you, still to, to take continue. piano lessons too. Oh, okay. And so how did you find out about Peabody? How did you get directed in, the, in that direction? and make the decision to switch over? Well, I think that that's any, any musician would have wanted to study at Peabody. That, that was a fine school. And I felt that, that that's what I wanted to do rather than stay at Lebanon Valley. What is your favorite memory of Marjorie? Uh, 
during this time period? Well, one thing I remember about Marjorie, and you might be interested in, was her, her wedding. She was married, she and Bob were married at the Walbrook Methodist Church. And he, he was already in the service, so they waited until she was, she graduated from Peabody and then they got married. But it wasn't a large, not a large wedding. And she just, she wore a suit. She didn't wear a fancy wedding dress. And what I do remember was that my father did not walk her down the aisle. And he, he didn't because he had not walked me down the aisle at my wedding for some reason. So he thought it would be fair to, to that he not have Marjorie walked down the aisle by him. Uh, there were not many people there. Bob's parents arranged to, to drive down from Ohio and they were driving that, that day of, of the wedding, but they had an accident. And his father had most of his problem was nose. He was hurt on the nose. Huh? But his mother had serious injuries and she had to go to the hospital. Therefore, she did not come to the wedding at all. So as soon as the wedding was over, Marjorie and Bob went down to the hospital to see her. Huh? I actually was asking about younger, when you were in Lebanon, Lebanon Valley. Valley and Peabody and Marjorie would have been in her teens. Do you have any particular memories of any any episode with Marjorie at that time? Not so much so. She was beginning to be a good musician because she played the violin and she enjoyed that very much. I guess you and Marjorie were far enough apart that you weren't necessarily doing a whole lot together. Did you, was there ever a time when you and Marjorie got in trouble for something? Not that I remember, because uh, there was almost eight years between us, so our interests were very different. How about you? What, what was the most trouble you ever got into with your parents? Oh, I didn't get into any trouble at all. Ever? Yeah. <laughs> Not that I remember, <laughs> or that I could talk about. <laughs> still? Yeah, still. You still couldn't talk about it. Right. How old were you when you started dating? Well, let's see, I was 16 when I graduated from high school. And I played in the inter-high school orchestra which was an orchestra made up of the, the best students from all the high schools in Baltimore. So I, I was felt very honored to be selected to play trumpet in that orchestra. And Byron Diefenbach was playing in the percussion section. So that's how I met him at the Inter High School Orchestra. So way back in high school. What about high school? Way back in high school. Yeah, in high school. Met. That was in high school because I, I, so we started dating and uh, as I say, I was 16 when I graduated from high school. So I would have been about that age, about 16. But I remember from photo albums, you dated other people. Yes, I had other boyfriends. Tell, tell us about some of those. Well, one of them was named Carl. <laughs> Spelled with a C, C A R L. Carl Beezer was his name. And he was a lot of fun. And uh, I, I, don't know, I don't remember the names of, of, of the other ones. I mean, there was, oh, Chet. There's Chet. one that had a really nice car. I remember that photograph. Yeah, uh huh. But Chet had a nice car, he was a little bit older. Oh. Mm -hmm. Did your parents like him? Okay, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. 
when you were dating, did you tend to go out alone or did you tend to go out in, in couple, groups of couples? No, we went out alone as a couple. Hmm. Went to the movies or something like that. And about how old? Was that high school? 17. And as I said, we were very active in our church, our Salem United Brethren Church. And I had boyfriends there at the church. Herbie was one of them. And how did your parents feel about you dating? They were okay about it. They were all right. There was never any friction? Well, there, there was one problem. Boys from the neighborhood would come up to the door to talk to me, and my father would say, nope, don't talk to them, they're Catholic. <laughs> that, that put an end to that. After our last discussion, I thought of one question about where there, was there any, when you were younger, like elementary school, junior high, was there a, a, a place that you particularly liked to go, like a candy store or something, a place that you could go on your own, like down the block to a candy store? Well, I would go to the grocery store. And that meant I had to walk up the alley and cross the street, a, a busy a busy street with a lot of cars going by, but I had to cross that to get over to the grocery store. And my mother would often send me there. So I, I remember doing that alone. And was that something that you considered a fun thing to do because you got to do it alone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other places that, that you went to as a child? Was there a playground or a park or? No, I don't remember that. I don't remember it. So when you uh, went to Peabody, you said you were still living at home, is that correct? Yes. Was that also true at Lebanon Valley? No, that, that was hours away. Okay. Yeah. So So what, I lived in the dorm there. Dorm situation. Did you enjoy that? Yes, I liked it. It was fun. Mm -hmm. So how did you feel about then going back home to live when going to Peabody? Well, that was all right because I was interested in going to Peabody. So that was fine. Did they not have a dorm? Well, they had a lot of students from Baltimore, but the students who were from out of town had to find their own places to live close to, to Peabody because there were no, no actual dorms that, that Peabody supported. Did you tell me that later in your time period at Peabody that you lived at a place nearby in a kind of a, with other students? No, I didn't. Or was that Bob? Well, Bob would have, yes. He lived about a block away, and that, that was a, a boarding house, and mm. so they could sleep there and get their meals there. Oh. At what time did you play in the park band? Where did that fall into this? Well, I was... I was almost finished at Peabody. It must have been in my last year at Peabody. And um, uh, the director, for some reason, I knew the director of, of the band. I probably knew him from my high, my high school years, oh. or he knew me, he knew of me. And uh, when he heard that I was playing the horn, well, he, he located me and, and said, if, if you'll join the union, you'll be able to play in the band. So I had to join the, the music, musicians' union, and then I was eligible to play in the park band because that was a paid job. Nice. Mm -hmm. While you were still finishing up at Peabody. I was finishing at Peabody. And I believe you told me that you were the first woman to play in the band. I was the first woman to play in the band. And 
After that, some of my friends joined uh, a girl who played clarinet and a Norma MacDonald who played trombone. So for a long while, it was just the three of us playing in the all-male band. And that was during war? Yes, that's why they were, were short on men. They were willing to take women because a lot of the men were in the service. Do you know, did they, when the war was over, did they get rid of the women and put men in, or did they no, still continue? No, the women stayed in the you band. Stayed? Were you still with them? I don't think so, not then. <laughs> so did Byron, you met? playing drums in high school, then I assume he went to a different school. Because, yes, because that orchestra was the inter-high school orchestra, made up of students from all of the high schools, and he went to city college, called a college, but it was a high school, and there were students from Eastern High School, the girls' school, and Polly, Polytechnic, another boys' school, and Patterson Park, and uh, Forest Park High School. All those schools were represented in that orchestra. And then did you two continue seeing each other while you were at Peabody? Yes, and at some point he went into service. Okay. okay. So, and then you graduated from Peabody, and was he back at that point? I don't remember exactly how that was, where he was at that time. And you, you graduated from Peabody to explain your degree, what that was. Well, I had a Bachelor of Music degree because I had taken all of my, my uh, non-musical courses at Hopkins, but that applied to my degree of a Bachelor, Bachelor of Music degree. And um, but I, I also had uh, a, um, a major in French horn. Performance? Yes. Or I thought you'd said something about a teaching degree. Well, my major instrument was French horn. A lot of them, it was piano or violin, but it was unusual for the major instrument to be French horn. But it was considered a teaching degree? Yes. As, but did they have separate performance degrees? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that isn't the real thing? No, no I wasn't that. in performance. What would have been different with that? Well, you, you would have to have done a lot of, of recitals to qualify for that. Mm -hmm. I'm still, still not quite done with your teens. Do you remember any particular time in your teens when you were angry with your parents? angry with my parents. Mm -hmm. It was mainly because they wouldn't let me see some boys I wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how old were you when you graduated from Peabody? I was probably 20. Because you were young, again, because you had started young. So what did you do upon graduation? You were still living at home, yes? No. I was married before I graduated. Oh, okay. At Peabody. At, where did that fall in, in line with your education? At my last year at Peabody. Okay. Right. So then we, we got an apartment, which was fairly close to Western High School, and I got a job there teaching right away. Right away? Okay. Mm -hmm. And what teaching? What? Instrumental music. 
they had a vocal music teacher, so of course they didn't need another one, but they, they took me on as an instrumental music teacher. So I taught some of the instruments and I got an orchestra started. An orchestra? Did they have a band also? No, they didn't. They just had a few instruments who would play for the assembly occasionally, but they didn't have a band or an orchestra. How many children? How many children were in that? Oh, probably 12. What uh, social class would you say that school was in relation to others? Well, it, it was a large group. There were 2,000 girls in that school. So you covered the whole spectrum, all, all classes. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't like like some private schools no. or upper echelon. No, because it was a, it was a, a city school. And what was the determining factor of getting in there? Grades? Well, it was it was the high school next in line after after your junior high school. So you could you, you needed to go to the high school that was in your area. And if you were in the Western High School area, that's where you went. If you were in the eastern part of the city, you went to Eastern High School. So that's what determined it was where you lived. Okay. Was it all races? Yes. Really? No, I don't remember that. No, so it would have been an all white school? Yes, probably. It still would have been segregated. Mm -hmm. um, how long did you teach there then? That's the school you went to, right? Yes. And how did, how did you feel about that, getting to teach at the school that you had gone to? Yeah, I thought it was great. I liked it. Because I knew the, the voice teacher, because she had become a good friend of mine. So I enjoyed being there with her. And I enjoyed starting girls on the instrument. Yeah, we, I would look for girls who played the piano because they could read the music and start them on string bass. And uh, of course, I, I was pretty good on, on trumpet and, and French horn and trombone, so I would start girls on those instruments. And how long did you teach there? Well, remember, I was married when I started to teach. You were newlywed. Yes. <laughs> so I taught there about three years, and uh, then I was pregnant. Okay. So I had to stop. And it's because you were not allowed to teach while you were pregnant? Is that true? Well, I guess you could have, but I didn't want to. So what are some of your most vivid memories from that time period? That's a lot going on. You're newlywed, you new new job out of school. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It was it was a daily job that I liked very much. I enjoyed teaching the instruments and enjoyed getting an orchestra started. I thought that was fun. And I just was very fortunate to be teaching at that school. Not just work. What, what would be your like some of your most vivid memories from that whole time period in your life? Were you and Byron playing together in any bands? No. Mm -hmm. No. I guess the other part was being in the apartment and being n near the school where I taught, and then being active in the music in the church, in his church, where he, where he was the organist. Myron was. Oh, I never knew that. Mm -hmm. What church was that? The Edmondson Avenue Methodist Church. Okay. So how did, how did you feel like setting up your own home? 
not yeah. not living with your parents. Oh, it was fine. I liked being out of being out on my own, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. So before we wrap up this, any, anything to add to this time period of your life in your, in your memories? Things that you did for fun at this at this time, this juncture. It's a lot of work, sounds yeah. like. So what did you do for fun? Oh, it was mostly anything in, involved in the in the church, church activities. That was it mainly. Uh -huh. Both of you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you sing in the choir? that point? Yes. Mm -hmm. In his choir, in the choir where he was the organist. Yeah. And did you ever play at the church then? Too? Yeah, I did. Um, not too much, but occasionally he would have me play. Did you have private music students in addition to your school? No, I didn't. Not, not at that time. The schoolwork was enough. And at this point in your life, did you expect that you would continue working? Or did you kind of think that once you started having children that that would be it? Well, I didn't, I didn't think I would continue teaching at the high school. No. Did you think you might continue playing? Was that a part of your mindset at that point? I think I played it in, in the park band for several seasons. Yeah, oh, okay. Even though I was a woman. Even. <laughs> and did Byron play with them also? No. Oh. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you were still gigging. <coughs> <laughs> so how far away did you live from your parents? Well, it, a couple miles. It was in walking distance I, because I remember one time we were at my parents and it started to snow and I guess we, we must not have had a car and we couldn't couldn't get a street car. We said, well, we'll walk. So we walked in the snow back to our apartment. A couple miles? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so were you seeing them a good deal? Occasionally, we would go, go to visit, yeah. And so was, was Marjorie, she was still in Peabody at this point? Yeah, I think she was there. Bob had graduated, but she was still there. And did she continue living at home while... Yes, and, and uh, they rented a room to a friend of hers. So the friend was living at, at Marjorie's house, oh. too. Okay. Mm -hmm. A Peabody student. Uh -huh. yeah. Anything else you want to add about this time period, this juncture? No, I can't think so. I don't think so. It was mainly teaching and working, and I, I enjoyed all of that very much. Well, thank you. I, I always learn something I never knew when, when we have these talks. I'm trying, trying to keep secrets from you. I know. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye.